Hey guys, Kyle, the Death Knight of Anime here, bringing you my review for Fire Force Season 2, Episode 22. So right out of the gate, we pick up where we left off with Shinra and Arthur fighting back Giovanni, who also lays everything we've learned on the table, which is that every th everything that society was built upon in the Tokyo Empire was all created for the sole purpose of reigniting the Great Cataclysm. And yet, just... Just on premise, you can see how there's a lot of inspiration taken from FMA with this. But one thing I also like is how there, there's really no need in order to hide it anymore. Like, like, hide it, like, so, hide it anymore. Like, there's there's so much that, that's been kind of built up at this point that, that, that really, there's, it's kind of a thing where you're like, you, you know what, just from screw, or, or just from screw keeping the truth, let's just kind of tell them anyway, because they, they've learned this much. So... <clears throat> So there, there's really like there's really no need to hide it. So you may as well just tell tell us outright because the, the the more interesting part of this reveal actually comes from the from the form of how Shinra and Company Eight are even going to how it comes from even more the question of how Shinra and Company Eight are even going to stop them because at this point everything is pretty much on track for the White Clad's mission to succeed and there's very little if no room to stop it anymore just just from how the fire force has continued to let themselves fall into one trap after another like in and it kind of it kind of shows how, how how pretty much being a how, how, how being a fire force fire soldier does have this effect of like you you, you pretty much tend to, to to respond to emergencies or anything with, without ever being being able to evaluate the situation beforehand you, you kind of need to you just need to act on act on what you know and and then work from there but it's like in it's one of those things but it's still it's one of those things where in the grand scheme of things really even, even though the fire it's one of those things where even in the grand scheme of things even though the fire force did succeed at stopping the explosion the that the, the explosion of the of the nether uh the only hope any the, the only hope anymore is to kind of take show back from, from just the fact that everyone barely got out of this alive and yet and yeah just, just from seeing just, just from seeing just from seeing just from seeing g g g g g g, g giovanni lose his shit over shinra linking with him via dola is simultaneously the most terrifying and the most hilarious thing i've ever seen in anime like that shit was straight up psychotic in the most weirdly hilarious ways i i don't know how to describe it anymore that's just it was just uh yeah hit when, when it came to his whole outburst in this episode, that was just a thing that happened. And again, I don't know if if if, if, if the way I was seeing it, 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 it from from the perspective of a watcher and and seeing and and from seeing G, and, and from seeing G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G um, and yeah, through Licked, we pretty much get the reveal of how the White Clad intends, again, like I talked about, we get the reveal of how the White Clad intends to destroy the Nether and the Tokyo Empire, which brings Maki back into the fold to help, to help stop the detonation, which they ultimately end up doing. And I will admit, the way Maki's brought back into the story, it felt a little, a lot more rushed than I remember, but considering how much of a dire circumstance every, everyone is facing in the moment, it's something I can also easily forgive. Also, 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 also though, how, how, however large the sacrifice and pacing was, it's still very much worth it to see Maki show up and shut up her dick of a brother. Like, which, the, the initial refusal to involve her, the, the initial... Every bit of refusal that 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 that, 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 that every bit of every 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 moment that that, that Prince Hakiji has refused to get her involved, uh, it not only not only reveals how linear-minded he was about Maki, like he was willing to die before involving her, but but when Maki does show up, and but 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 but, but when we finally see her show up again, it not only shuts shuts him up, which I'll just say outright, it was vastly needed because th that whole comment about being a female, yeah, I'm. That that, that that there's no way around it. That, that was a bit of a, a, a diggish sexist kind of sexist thing to say. I'm sorry, but it was. But uh, yeah, aside from that, j j j j just from seeing Maki show up, show up her brother after that, 
it was so well deserved uh but but it was so well deserved obviously but it it also showed but on top of seeing her own usual brand of badass on steroids just from seeing how muck how capable just just getting to see what Maki's capable of firsthand and the proficiency she demonstrated in controlling the flames shows just how necessary the like the like from, like from, like from seeing Maki in action what was was for Furnish Takagi in order for him to understand how powerful she really is on top of like the true nature of her role within the eight which stems from just her un unwavering resolve to just do what's right like that, that that's the one thing that's the one thing that that, that, that was that, that was key about her role in the eighth is that however strong or weak or whatever she might be the, the one thing that's always been her strongest trait has been her resolve and and takagi all, and ta this is something and on top of that though th like pretty much seeing her like pretty much see, like pretty much, like pretty much, like pretty much seeing maki accomplish this this great feat or something like that it's something that Takagi also ne needed to see so he could honestly break free of exactly what Giovanni was talking about, which is how society exists solely to fill the destiny of the great of the great cataclysm. And because if you really look at at, at, from, at from how, how pretty much Takagi has been acting up at this point, every everything that uh, that that, that, from, that, was, that was mentioned in the fight between. That everything that, 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 from, that everything that, that everything that, that from Giovanni had mentioned is kind of exemplified in some ways in Takaki as a character, and and the way he was acting up until this point was really as another useful cog in that machine, but now that he's but but na, but now that that he basically saw like what Maki is capable of, he was able and her abilities firsthand it had it had given like Takagi's a certain release from that mindset and realizing that okay yes it does okay yes i i, I her, my, my sister is strong without without me needing to protect her and i've been doing things all wrong i i i, I, I even even not even i need to even i need to start questioning some things here and there so yeah it's it's a nice very it's a very nice way of what way of of giving both the of of giving both both Takagi and and, and Maki, some some great development, honestly. Um, art and animation was art and animation. This episode of, was, of course, insane. But just a visual image of what happens when Maki controls the flames is is the mo is some of the most badass and visually intense scenes I've seen in the anime to date. Aside from maybe the conclusive battle at the end of season one between Sho and Shinra, but really, it's just a reminder of what we've known about Maki all along, which is she she is the series certified top tier badass and waifu. But also, it shows just what she's capable of and how much power she actually has. Like when. Like if if you really look at what at what Maki had done in this epi in this episode, it really makes you wonder just like if 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 this if this is what if this is what Maki's capable of it uh, completely unrestrained and when she fully releases releases her power, then in some ways I think this I think this potentially like like from her, like from her shows her as the uh, as the most as the most powerful like fire soldier like e even more than Shinra honestly so yeah I think th this this also just showed just what kind of potential that Maki has honestly what kind of potential Maki has to be just the most powerful fire soldier really um now backing up a bit to the fight between uh, between pretty much Shinra and, and Giovanni uh we see that Shinra realizes that on top of the adult link with, with, with Giovanni he also linked with, with, with basically Conroe back in the uh, in, in the Asakusa arc, and I'd have to reread the manga in order to see if this has already been revealed. But the fact that he kept it a secret shows he not he not only more than likely knows more about what's going on than we've probably been led to believe, but the fact that he's kept it a secret all this time probably means that Conroe himself might also be a pillar or of some. Or some unseen role to play in the grand scheme of the story when we reach that fated day when the cataclysm occurs. What that role entails is still the bigger mystery, however, unless again, unless I've looked over a detail from the manga. But yeah, 
Uh, but yeah, guys, that's all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Mr. Crunchyroll. Dead Night of Anime, signing off. Later, guys.